the series of messages on the revelatory ministry of Christ's miracles. We're nearing the end of this series. This will be the last miracle affecting the natural realm. It occurred after the resurrection of Christ, but I'm going to deal with another set of miracles after this. I have added uh, one which I unfortunately omitted, and that is the death of Christ, which I'm going to proclaim to have been a miracle. Mm -hmm. The death of Christ. And the resurrection of Christ. Yeah. And the ascension of Christ, and his very, and some appearances of Christ. They were miracles too, because mm -hmm. he, uh -huh. the fact that anyone saw him was a miracle. Amen. He rose from the dead. <clears throat> Miracles of Christ, of course, depict the complexity and the effectiveness of salvation. They tell us that uh, sin affected people's vision, so we had miracles about opening men's eyes. Mm -hmm. Sin affected people's hearing or perception, so they have miracles of healing people's ears or deafness. Sin affected the uh, hands, so to speak, what you do. So there are miracles that are like a healing of a withered hand. Uh, sin affects the tongue so that you can't talk right. So there are miracles of a healing of a dumb person. Uh, sin affecting our feet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we can't move about right. And so there are miracles of healing impotent people. Uh, Faith, uh, uh, sin affected the people's minds, so they couldn't think right. So there were people that were of a demented order, like this wild man of Gadara, mm -hmm. and he healed them. And sin affects our posture, how you hold yourself. You can't stand upright before God. So there's a miracle of a healing of a woman with a boat over in her back. You see, there's a number of miracles of this sort. Uh, sin affected how much you could get from God. So you had a miracle of a catch in abundance of fish. We're going to have one like that tonight. So following this, we will cover about six more, six more miracles. Now this account of the, the second draught of fish is found in John, the 21st chapter. I believe I'm going to read this. First 12 verses. It's important we all become very familiar with the words that is said about Jesus. Mm -hmm. What John calls the record God has given of his son. Amen. Might surprise you how many professing Christians know very little really about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You get beyond that Jesus was born and that he died and rose, that's kind of represents a synopsis of the totality of their understanding about Jesus, but this just shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. After these things, it's after he showed himself to his disciples two times. After these things, Jesus showed himself again mm -hmm. to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. On this wise, he showed himself. There were gathered together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. He said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fishes coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, that's about a hundred yards dragging the net of fish, with, with fish it was in the water they were dragging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fish, a hundred and 
50 and 3, and for all that there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Mm -hmm. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth to them and fish likewise. Now, this now is the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he had risen from the dead. But I love the <laughs> I love the precision. The third time. <laughs> How'd you think about the background of this particular event? <coughs> Jesus had appeared two times to his disciples as they were gathered together. And Thomas was absent the first time, present the second time. It's recorded in John the 20th chapter. I have a purpose for providing this background because I'm going to show you that you can forget what you've seen really quick. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. John 20, 24 says, Thomas, one of the twelve, said, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We've seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his head, I will not believe. And after eight days, his first time was on the Lord's Day when he rose from the dead. Eight days, that'd be the next Lord's Day. <clears throat> People think the Lord's Day is not important, but you just kind of kind of think this thing out. After eight days, again, the disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. When Jesus came, the doors being shut, and then Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, reach, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Mm -hmm. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. Mm -hmm. so Thomas missed a couple of things there. Mm -hmm. At that time he absented himself. That was the time Jesus, the first time when Jesus breathed on him and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. He wasn't there and he missed the blessing too because he didn't say, Blessed are you, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. He didn't say, You saw and believe. Blessed are you. He said, Blessed are those that don't see. Amen. That's us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it could have been him. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. It, uh -huh. it could have been him. Uh -huh. He could have been one of the first persons yes. who didn't see yet believed. Yeah. Yes. Mary. Saw and believed. Yeah. The women saw. Yes. Believed. Thomas could have been one of the first persons who didn't see and right. believed, and he missed it. He missed yeah. being being there, and then he missed the blessing he could have had. Mm -hmm. Well, he was but a man in this respect, and uh, we should be able to identify with him. Mm -hmm. Now, after these two times, you think this would have peaked? Now, this would have peaked their sensitivity, right? So. The, They'd sure be able to recognize now. If, if being exposed to the Lord a lot of times mm -hmm. makes him very perceptible to you so you can't forget, well, then they, they should be able to recognize mm -hmm. Jesus right away. Now he shows himself, which shows it was a miracle. He shows himself. Mm -hmm. You've got to realize when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose in, he rose in a different kind of a body. Yeah. He, was a, he rose immortal. Amen. So now it become he had to if he didn't show himself, nobody could yeah. nobody could see him. These eyes can't behold this sort of thing. So he showed himself. To, a, to a, by the Sea of Tiberias, which is which is the Sea of Galilee. You say, well, how do you know that? Well John 6 1 says, These things, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Yeah, I, I think it's important to see that because Sometimes people try and find contradictions in the Bible. It's the same sea. See, Tiberius was a geographical area that's, that he named it the sea that's like close to this region, is what they were saying. Now this, uh, we'll learn in this event the, the obtuseness of the flesh. How you, the flesh can be exposed to divine revelation over and over and and not get the point. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, you, for this, that wasn't the case. Now, after Pentecost, this was emphatically not the case. Right. Uh -huh. They didn't have one vision; that'd be it. Mm -hmm. One word; that'd be it. 
what appearance that be. But this isn't the way it was at this particular time. Now here's the occasion. Jesus had died, the disciples had cast down, he'd appeared to them twice, but they still kind of hadn't got the bearings yet. Mm -hmm. Hadn't got the bearings yet. He told them to meet him in Galilee, and they did, and he talked to them, he told them what was coming, and so forth. But uh, some of the disciples gathered together. It was only seven of them. It wasn't all of them. It was just seven. John 21, 2 tells you who it was. It tells you who five of them was. Two of them are unnamed. There were together. It pays to get together. You don't want to miss this. Yeah. Don't want to miss this. It pays to get together. Amen. You have a good reason for not being there, but you miss it anyway. Huh? You miss it anyway. There were together Simon Peter, that's one, Thomas called Didymus, two, Nathaniel of Cain of Galilee, three, sons of Zebedee, didn't even name them, that's James and John, and two other, and two other of his disciples. <laughs> kind of a strange mixture. You got Thomas mentioned before James and John. How about that? Just to kind of show you God has a way of a humbling you. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even there the first time. He got second mentioned here. Mm -hmm. And the James and John, they're not even named. Mm -hmm. Their father's named. Who wasn't even one of the apostles or one of the disciples, so far as we know. And here's a stranger still, Nathaniel. He wasn't even an apostle. What's he, what's he doing there? Yeah. Remember now, these are the people who Jesus had said to wait. There are people that say that Jesus wait for the promise and so forth, just the apostles. All right, now you got here, you got seven people here. And the we know Peter, James, and John. We know, and Thomas, we know they were apostles. We know Nathaniel wasn't. And we don't know who these other two people were here. Quite a, quite a mixture. In fact, Nathaniel, we don't know a whole lot about Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. He's mentioned the first part of John when his brother Philip, who wasn't an apostle, he was chosen. Tom, it is a, some sets of brothers. Peter and Andrew are brothers, both of them are chosen. Mm -hmm. James and John, they're brothers, both of them are chosen. Thomas Didymus, which means the twin. Thomas was a twin. One of the twins were chosen. Mm -hmm. Philip, and they, uh, Philip and Nathaniel, they were close together. Philip's chosen and Nathaniel's not. Mm -hmm. Very interesting to see. Here's what the scripture tells us about Nathaniel. Philip finds Nathaniel, saith unto him, We found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Son of, the son of Joseph? what he said. <laughs> Everything wasn't known about him at that time. Mm -hmm. Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Come and see. You don't think anything's happening in our fellowship? Come and see. Yeah. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Well, you figure this must be an apostle of this He'll surely choose this man. This is the kind of people he's wanting. Nathaniel said unto them, Which knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Then Jesus told him, You're going to you think this is something. Mm -hmm. You're going to see Son of God and angels ascending and descending upon him. I'm pointing out here this strange mixture of people. You'd think that the eleven would have been all together, huh? Or at least the eleven and Cleopas. <laughs> but I said this is a strange mixture, which means like Nathaniel was there in these previous gatherings. Yeah. And they saw fit to come together. Seven of them came together. And Peter declared, well, I'm, I'm going fishing. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we also go with you. 
As I'm speculating about what Peter meant here, and he doesn't say exactly what's meant, so that really you're kind of shut up to speculation here. Some, mm -hmm. some think that he was so discouraged, he just decided, I'm going back to my old trade. Like I'm going permanently back to fishing, even though the text doesn't say that. But some people think that's what it means. Some people think he, he considered his calling. Jesus called him while him and his brother were fishing. Mm -hmm. And one time Jesus used his boat when he was preaching. And he caught a great catch. He said, I'm going fishing. Maybe a, maybe a blessing will come through. Well, that, that, could, be, that could very well be. That's some kind of good thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm inclined to think myself that he thought to busy himself so he wouldn't be so distracted. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus had told him before this, mm -hmm. wait. Don't wait mm -hmm. before this. He said they were going to be endued with power. Before this, wait, mm -hmm. and so he. Uh, there's something about labor that relieves the mind. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sometimes when people need to do, they just need to get up and do something. Yeah. Uh huh. Amen. Amen. So Jesus generally appeared to somebody when they were doing something. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So they went fishing, and they fished all night. And the scripture says they caught nothing. Well, they were they were familiar. Peter, James, and John, uh, they were familiar with fishing all night and catching nothing. Mm -hmm. They knew about this. Luke 5.5, 5, they'd been fishing. Simon and Jesus asked them if they had anything. And Simon said, Master, we've toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, we'll let out on the net. They did. And they caught quite a few. Yeah, there are periods of futility. Mm -hmm. These people were disciples when they couldn't catch anything. They were still disciples. They were still belonged to Christ, but they just uh, <laughs> weren't catching anything. But to learn this is the nature of spiritual life uh -huh. here. Don't think that every day, every day is just going to be filled over with perceptible blessings. Uh-huh. It would be nice if it were, and in yeah. fact, God does lady daily load us with benefits, yeah. but it's not always seen. That's right. Sometimes the fish are like on the other side of the boat, <laughs> and you're throwing your net, and there's nothing really there, but just keep throwing it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Keep throwing it. Now the miracles that occurs, the morning comes, and the Lord's more prone to work in the morning when there's light. When there's illumination, I don't know that in Scripture anyone was ever directed to a miraculous catch at night. It's just something that's kind of interesting to pursue. Most of the time it's in the day or in the morning. That's when they caught. In the morning, when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore. Mm -hmm. There he was. <laughs> the Scripture, if you're familiar with Scripture, you know that morning is a off on a very special time, and it's going to prove to be a special time here. David said in Psalm 59, 16, I will sing of thy power, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, mm -hmm. in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. <laughs> well, actually, when you wake up in the morning, it's kind of a, you, it's a confirmation that God's protecting you through the night. Amen. <laughs> You notice these fishermen didn't drown during the night. There wasn't a storm in the boat capsized during the night. Psalm 90 verse 6 says, In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up, like a fresh beginning. Psalm 92 2 says, Show forth thy loving kindness in the morning. And the morning came and there, there Jesus was on the shore. But... John 21, 4 says the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. They couldn't recognize it. Well, the script says they were 200 furlongs away, 100 yards away, 100 yards away. They couldn't, couldn't quite make out the form. Couldn't tell. There's a, there's a distance that can form between a person and Christ to where they can, he's there, but they can't tell. Uh-huh. It may just look like a, a brother or a sister that's coming your way. <laughs> but it's actually the Lord. You have to see this. And these, uh, these encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
There's a great, uh, divine visitations can be easily forgotten. I read to you how that they, Jesus had appeared miraculous to them on two occasions. Both of them were extended. Yeah. They weren't just a momentary, it was, they were extended. There was dialogue that went between them and both of them. Promises that were uttered, challenges to unbelief that were uttered. Blessings that were uttered, breathing on them, received the Holy Spirit were took place. There's some very, very remarkable things happened, but they couldn't associate that figure on the shore with the one that they'd been with two other two previous times, at least two previous times. And Peter it was three because he had a special appearance to Peter. So it was the third time Peter saw him, but he he still didn't recognize it, and any of the other disciples they didn't either. So Jesus speaks to them. He says, that, Children, do you have any meat? We'd say, have you caught, any, caught anything yet? God has a way of pointing out your vanity. Uh-huh. Yeah. He does. He has a way of pointing it out to you. So that after you've toiled and toiled, and you're trying to get something, you haven't got anything, Jesus has a way of saying, you haven't got anything yet? Uh, do you understand that yet? Yeah. That been opened up to you yet? Huh? Mm -hmm. You able to put anything in a, your remembrance that you perceived and seen yet? He has a way of bringing it out. Mm -hmm. To accentuate, see that without me you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, they answered him honestly and candidly. They just was short answer. No, it was his no. Mm -hmm. We haven't. They didn't offer an excuse. Mm -hmm. That's a bad night tonight. We, we, didn't use, we didn't use the right net tonight. We probably should have gone down the lake a little bit. They offered no excuse. They just told you, no, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. It's good not to try and explain. Right. Not to try and explain why you don't have anything. Just no guile, no explanation. Just say, no, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. If you feel if you're not strong, and he says, are you strong? Say, no. Amen. I know that some people say if you confess it, just confess you're strong and then you'll be strong. I, uh, I heard this song, I remember singing it. I sang it a couple of times and I couldn't sing it anymore. It said, let the sick say I'm well. Let the weak say I'm strong. That's a, it's a nice little chorus, I suppose, but... Just teaching people to lie. If you're weak, say, I'm weak. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not, I'm strong. Uh -huh. If you're sick, say, I'm sick. Uh -huh. Not, I'm well. Uh -huh. <laughs> the people are being taught this, you understand, yeah. these days. So they didn't catch have any fish. They just say, no, but we're believing for a catch. <laughs> yeah. They just said, no, we don't have any. And Jesus, in fact, told them, well, you've been, <laughs> you've been fishing on the wrong side of the boat. Well, you got to see behind the scenes. This is the Lord of heaven and earth. He told the fish to stay on the other side. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't doubt that they tried on both sides. He moved the fish over. He wouldn't let them move them over the other side. Right. You've got to connect this with me. Yeah. So cast your net on the right side. That not right as in correct side, but just mm -hmm. on the right, on the right side. Cast over there, and and he said, and you shall find. Now there's something about divine direction. So they didn't know this was divine direction, keep in mind. At the time, they didn't know this was Jesus. This was some figure on the shore that offered this suggestion, so far as appearance is concerned. But there is such a glorious thing as divine direction. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't really tell that that's what it is, but the prophet Isaiah talked about it. He said in Isaiah 30, verse 21, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. That is, when you come to a crossroad, mm -hmm. you say, What's, what do I do? you got two choices, and you don't know which way to go. Mm -hmm. Do I fish on the left side or the right side? You hear a voice, see, there's like a spiritual intuition. It's actually the Lord's directing you, but mm -hmm. you, it's not, I am the Lord. It's not that sort of direction. Mm -hmm. 
Isaiah 42, 16. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. Yeah. How's that? I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Mm -hmm. I will make the darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. See, the picture you're giving here is that it wasn't all that perceptible that this was actually happening. Thus saith the Holy One of Israel, Isaiah 48:17. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee the prophet, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Mm -hmm. So you say, how did I end up where I am at? Knowing the Lord, my understanding being fruitful, having confidence. How did I get here? How did I get here where the word of God is making more sense to me, where I'm more wholly devoted to the Lord than I've ever been before? How, how did I get here? You were led there. Amen. Amen. That's how you got there. Amen. Amen. He said, cast your net on the right side. See, you didn't know it was him, but it was him. Mm -hmm. How'd Joseph get into Egypt? Mm -hmm. God sent him there. Yeah. Yes. Well, the circumstances looked like his brother's sold him. Yes, yes, yes. That's the man of the kingdom. And uh, they cast their net in, and they weren't able to pull, uh, pull in the hall. It was too big. It's too big to catch in. Therefore, they cast their net into the sea, and the, and the disciples, they didn't know it was Jesus. They cast their net into the sea, and they couldn't, they couldn't draw it in. And they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. They had to leave it in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even get it into uh -huh. the boat. Yeah. They had to wait till they got to land to really see what they caught. Mm -hmm. oh, maybe, maybe the kingdom is still like this. Maybe there are times when you get so much you kind of have to wait until you get home to see how much you got. Amen. That's the nature of the, of the kingdom of God. Abundance. Jesus said, I come to you might have life and have it more abundantly. That doesn't mean an abundance of stuff. People that teach this are wrong. It's life that's abundant, not uh -huh. stuff that's uh -huh. abundant. Or things that's abundant. He didn't say, I come to you might have more cars. That's not what life is. More response to God, more awareness of God, more knowing God than was ever possible before. Amen. 3.20 says that he's able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all we ask or think, you have brought a bigger net if they knew what kind of catch they were, if catch they were going to have, they hauled out the giant net. And where they, the net they had was too small for what they caught. It's the same with you. You know, you've caught things from the Lord that we, the net you cast was actually too small for what you got. And 1 Timothy 1.14 reminds us that the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love. It's a lot. Titus 3.6 says of the Holy Spirit, which He shed on us abundantly. He shed on us a abundantly. I will tell you that when you got Christ, you got a lot. Amen. 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 More than you dare to imagine. Well, now, here's that. Here's the situation. They were... Whatever their frame of mind, they had presence enough of mind to get together. That's one. At least some of them did. <laughs> and they, uh, if they hear a figure out there saying, casting on the right side, they cast to get a mold to the fish, or what's going to be their re response? Well, John, he puts everything together. He says to Peter, it's interesting, he says it to Peter, <clears throat> like it, maybe in his ear, it's the Lord. He knew. <laughs> it pays to lean on Jesus' bosom. You can you can pick up on things quicker. Mm -hmm. It pays to be the only disciples at the foot of the cross when yes. he died. How you pick up on things mm -hmm. quicker. When you get closer, you're more perceptible. You can put it together quicker. Some people have great blessings of God, but it takes a long time before they can put it together, before they can make sense out of it. It takes a long time. Because they sort of lived at a distance from the Lord. It is the Lord. Now that foreshadowed what it means to know the Lord. 
one of the marks of the new covenant is they shall all know me. Like, what does that mean? Among other things, it means you can recognize him. Amen. You can look at what looked like another, just a figure on the shore, and you can recognize that's the Lord. See, that part of knowing the Lord is in your life when you can say, this was the Lord. That's what this was. Some of the Psalms are nothing more than David recognizing it was the Lord. Thou hast been a shield and a buckler to me. Uh -huh. How do you know that? He, re he recognized it. Yes. Knew the Lord. So knowing the Lord involves recognizing Him. <coughs> Peter then, he girds himself with his fisher's coat and jumps in the sea for he was naked. Now, I wanted to say a word about this. This is what means stark naked. This is what it means. He had his loincloth on as the idea. In the Bible, when you're naked, you only had your undergarments on. Mm -hmm. We live in a day when you have to say that because people think the wrong thing. So he would sell his modesty. You may be sure he didn't jump in the sea with less on than Adam and Eve put on. I mean, you can be sure of this. Uh huh. This was the Lord. He knew this is the Lord. You don't want to arrive with the Lord and start naked. Mm -hmm. If Adam knew it and Eve knew it, you can be sure people know it further down the lines. He jumped into the sea. He couldn't wait for the boat to get there. He's going to swim ashore. And he foreshadowed this seizing the kingdom by violence. Yeah. There's some people, uh, you have to read, some of you are in this category. You were with some other people. You recognized the Lord and you couldn't wait for them to get there. You just jumped in ahead of time and separated from the other people. They, they, they finally got there, but you weren't going to wait. See, there's some people say, when my mother comes, when my wife comes, when my children comes, then I'll come. Jump out of the boat! Amen! Uh -huh. Get there before everybody else does. Amen! You have to picture this. See, I'm showing you these miracles are a picture of spiritual life. Lived, it's being lived out for you. The other disciples, they were in a little ship not far from shore, a hundred yards. <laughs> when you're coming to Jesus, a hundred yards is a long way. <laughs> when you're rowing, this is a long way. They weren't in a motorboat, keep in mind, or a sailboat. Long way, but they, they came in, and they, see, Jesus is drawing these people. Yeah. This is a picture of Jesus drawing them. John knew who it was. He told Peter, I don't know if Peter told the others or not. Doesn't say he did. But the others, they were actually being drawn in yep. by the Lord of glory, being drawn in. Peter, John was drawn, recognized him right away. Peter's drawn, jump in and swim. The others are drawn. They make, make their way to shore with their boat. And what, what does the scripture say? They were dragging, they came dragging the net through the water, <laughs> water with them. Here's what the scripture says that. Uh, Dragging the net with the fishes. Well, <laughs> you don't want to try and come to Jesus and leave behind what He given you to see. Yeah. <laughs> leave behind the catch. You got to bring what He gave you yeah. when you come to Him. Mm -hmm. you, this is kind of an art, a spiritual art in prayer and coming to the Lord is to bring what you caught, mm -hmm. and don't forget His benefits. Mm -hmm. The psalmist said. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Yeah. What's that mean? Bring the net. Drag it through the water. What you've been given to see, don't lose your recollection of it. Because uh -huh. the Lord's going to tell you to do something with it mm -hmm. when you get in. When they came to land, well, Jesus had prepared some food for them uh -huh. while they were waiting. You know, Jesus... He washed their feet, and now he's going to prepare a meal. He's living out that he's going to feed his sheep. He's living this out. Mm -hmm. There's some people you have to deal with, they're coming in from a hard night of toil. Mm -hmm. And they're coming in after just kind of freshly realizing that this is the Lord. They feed my sheep. He's telling you what this is involved in doing this. And sometimes they, people need a special meal because they've been toiling all night. Mm -hmm. And bring your bed. And then Jesus said to them, He said, uh, Bring some of what you caught. <laughs> bring of the fish which you 
Well, technically they did catch it. It is true. Technically they did catch it, but they knew it was at his direction. But bring some of that. Bring some of that that I showed you. Bring, bring some of that with you. This is important, brethren, to learn to bring your blessings to the, when you come to the Lord. Uh -huh. Don't just come to the Lord and spread out all your problems before you. Spread it all out. Uh -huh. This is what's been going wrong. This is what I need. This is where I'm deficient. You spread all that out. Spread some of the stuff you caught. Spread some of that out before Amen. you. Amen. Let me give you an example. Psalm 59, 16. Here's bringing the net. I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. What's he doing? He's bringing the net, dragging it through the waters. He comes to the Lord. Here it is again, Psalm 61, 3. Thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. What's he doing? He's bringing the net, pulling it through the water. Psalm 63, 7. Thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. He's bringing the, mm -hmm. bringing the net. And I will tell you that uh, contemporary Christianity is not, does not do well in this area. It does not do well in this area. Of being able to recognize what God's given and bring it as you approach to the Lord. Bring it to Him as an offering. And what happens when he says, bring some Peter single-handed, goes up and drags, drags the thing into shore. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes. Well, that's, some, that's some feet. Didn't say it. Each one of them took a corner and pulled it in. He did it single-handed. Well, that was kind of an extra benefit because he got there first. Mm -hmm. Swam in there. Drew it into shore. See, getting a catch, <laughs> that's one thing. Bringing it into shore, that's something else. Mm -hmm. Having a great blessing from the Lord, that's one thing. Being able to use it, that's something else. So you has got to at some point be drawn into shore where you have some utility and can use it. Getting the catch. Look at, get, look at bringing it into shore. Look at it this way. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. Think of that as pulling the net into, mm -hmm. into the shore full of fishes. Yeah. And he gave you a count. There were 153 very large, very large fishes. Yeah. They were extraordinary size. These weren't, these weren't minnows or crappies. Yeah. So he drew them in. And yet the scripture makes a point. And yet there were so many, but the net wasn't broken. This was not a 153 large fish net. If you were to go down to the local fishery and buy a net, and you were about for 153 large fish, this isn't the net they would have sold you. This isn't like having a treasure in an earthen vessel, see? It's a, it wasn't made for this much, but it held it anyway, without Amen. breaking. It's God teaching you now about salvation. In salvation, you're getting something really that, by all rules of human logic, men couldn't be able to contain uh -huh. the greatness of this. Uh -huh. I wouldn't surprise me at all that, they're probably, that you could probably find 153 special things that are included in salvation. If someone wanted to take the time to figure it out, I wouldn't doubt that you'd find 153 big things mm -hmm. that you have in Christ. And yet for all that multitude of fish, not only were they caught, they were drug 100 yards through the water, <laughs> then drug up to, on the land, and the net was still intact. Mm -hmm. Well, God's certainly showing you. Mm -hmm. You don't lose anything by bringing all of it right up to the Lord. Pull, bring right up to Him for blessing. You won't lose any, Amen. any of it. And as I mentioned to you, the God sends His Holy Spirit. Ephesians three sixteen says to strengthen you with might by His Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ can. Yeah, Amen. So that Christ can dwell in your heart mm -hmm. through faith. That's so the net won't break. Mm -hmm. He strengthened this net. He didn't make the fish light. He made the net strong. Uh -huh. He didn't make the fish small. Uh -huh. He made the net strong.
See, well, that's what he does with you. He doesn't reduce the power of Christ, reduce the glory of his presence. He strengthens your inner man so the real Christ can dwell in you. There it is pictured in this. Now Jesus tells him, <coughs> come and dine. Come and dine. <laughs> you think they ever forgot that? Come and dine, bread and fish, cooked. I imagine they never tasted fish or bread like that. Mm -hmm. Come and dine. It reminds me of Isaiah's prophecy in this mountain. Isaiah 25, 6. In this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees of fat things, full of marrow and wines on the lees, well refined. He's the best of everything. Not just gourmet. It won't be gourmet hors d'oeuvres. It's a spiritual gourmet meal of the essentials for a spiritual life. It's all depicted here. It was already. It was all ready for him when he when it came in. Ezekiel said, Ezekiel 34, 14. I will feed them in a good pasture. And upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold. And in a fat pasture. And they shall feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock. I will cause them to lie down. Saith the Lord God. That's all that's in come and die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At some point. If you want to, want to really walk with the Lord. You've got to eat what he's prepared. Uh -huh. It's got to be the premier meal. He'll ask you to bring some of what you caught. But that's, that's one of the side dishes. Yes. That's a side dish. That's not the main main dish. See, it is Christ's nature to feed his flock. That's, mm -hmm. uh -huh. that's his nature. And then the scripture says, none of the disciples durst ask him, who art thou? Knowing, knowing mm -hmm. it was the Lord. How'd they know? By his appearance? By what he did. Uh -huh. By what he did. Mm -hmm. Mary saw his appearance and thought it was a gardener. Cleopas and his friends saw him and they didn't know, they didn't know what it was. They know about what he did. Nobody can prepare food for his people like Jesus. What Jesus did, he stirred up their pure minds by way of remembrance. They caught fish before. They, this had happened before. Mm -hmm. yes. All of a sudden they connected. <laughs> This is, that was three and a half years earlier they mm -hmm. caught the first catch. Oh, they knew. This is the same one, see? Yeah. He stirred up these recollections of what the Lord had done. See, they had, it still appears these disciples were still struggling with thinking of Jesus as dying and leaving. It hadn't all come together yet for them. So Jesus takes them back to a, another memory that antedated <laughs> the memory of him dying. The memory of catching, so they can connect. This is, this is me. And then the scripture tells he told him, "Bring some of what you caught." And Jesus, verse thirteen says, "Jesus cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise." That's after a long night of toil. That was after a long night of toil. Mm -hmm. They got to eat first what Jesus prepared. Secondly, a miraculous catch that they never would have caught if Jesus hadn't come there. They'd have just fished on a couple of days. It wouldn't have caught anything at all. Well, what do you learn from events like this? Well, the Lord extends himself to build our confidence. That's why he's appearing. Before he goes back, he's appearing. This is now the third time. John said it's now the third time collectively. It was just seven is all. One of them wasn't an apostle. We don't know who two of them were. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it? Reminded me of that text in Malachi. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. The Lord hearkened and heard it. Mm -hmm. Here's these seven. Yep. They had presence of mind enough to come together, and they were not disappointed. Scripture tells us that Hebrews 2, 6.18 that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, 
we might have a strong consolation who have fled to him for refuge to lay hold on the hope set before us. Jesus knows that nobody will make much progress in either living for him or working for him. It's not sure Amen. that they really are dealing with Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Maybe they think that they're just dealing with the church. Some people, that, that's a, about as far as they get. They have some association with the church. Maybe it's just association with some brothers or sisters. But until you have this confidence that it's the Lord Jesus himself uh -huh. that you're dealing with, and it's the Lord Jesus himself who's directing you, and it's the Lord Jesus himself that's feeding you, until you have that kind of confidence, you will be like these men who toiled all night and didn't catch anything. That's how it will be. But Jesus extends himself. If he's got to work a special miracle for these men to get this point, he'll do it. Mm -hmm. And then feed them. And eat with them. And 